There we go. Okay, everybody's got a chair and I hope you uh, received my email early this morning. I meant to get it out last night. I apologize to um, have some kind of a yoga block available beside you or maybe a stool, step stool, something that you can reach down to the side. If you wanna go grab that now, um, feel free. I, sorry if you didn't get the email sooner. We do um, in the classes that I teach normal uh, other yoga classes just on a mat, we always open with a meditation. So I'd like to invite you into an easy seated posture with your spine tall, your mind elevated, your chin nicely drawn in towards your chest, resting comfortably against the back of the chair. For the meditation, it's called Nadi Shodana breathing or alternate nostril breathing. So you bring your right thumb and you close the right nostril. You can place your index finger and your middle finger at the center of your forehead just to have a place for those fingers to rest. It also helps to center you. You draw an inhale, breathe in through the left nostril. Then you switch, take the, left, the ring finger to the left nostril and exhale through the right nostril. Inhale through the right nostril. Switch, close the right nostril with the thumb and exhale left. Continue this pattern. Inhale through the left nostril. Close the left with the ring, exhale right. Inhale right. Close the right, exhale left. Inhale left. Switch, exhale right. So it's always an exhale, inhale, switch, exhale, inhale. I say that because some people breathe faster than others. Some people have larger, smaller lung capacities. So every time you switch, you breathe out, then you breathe in, then you switch, exhale, inhale, switch, exhale, inhale, switch. This is balancing out your brain hemispheres. It's nice to be balanced in life, in yoga. If you get confused, just start again. Exhale, inhale, switch. Exhale, inhale, switch. elbow your hand gets sore you can completely change hands though the ring finger will be closing the opposite nostril the thumb will be closing the opposite nostril do your best to keep the rhythm exhale inhale switch exhale inhale switch give you another 30 seconds here to really deepen your breath slow it down and find an innate pattern that exists in you, stimulating both brain hemispheres, helping to balance out all sides, both sides of the body. You can relax the hands down as you finish off that breath cycle. Take a moment to readjust your seat, feet flat on the floor, ideally. Hands can be in your lap. Bring the shoulders up towards the ears. Fire up that brainstem squeeze. Exhale and drop the shoulders down. Inhale and squeeze up. Shoulders towards the ears. Exhale, lower them down evenly. Inhale, squeeze up. Exhale down. 
as you lift the shoulders up this time, they come up and then they go forward, then they drop down. Pull them back, lift them up, bring them forward, drop them down. You can make it more fluid here. That's just that sort of four circular motion. As you inhale, bring those shoulders up. As the exhale happens, the shoulders drop down. The hands might glide along the calves a little bit or along the quads. And then pause, reset your spine, reset your shoulders. We'll go the other way. So we lift the shoulders up, we draw them back, drop them down, bring them forward, lift them up, draw them back, bring them forward and start to generate a nice smooth circle. A breath aligned with the circle, circulating the oxygen through the bloodstream. And return back to center. The arms extend out wide, palms flip up. The right palm flips down, the left palm stays flipped up. Look to the left hand. Rotate through center with the inhale and switch. Right palm up, left palm down, look right. You may feel a slight manipulation in the spine as you move from the other side to the other side. Look left, flip the palms the opposite way. Turn and look to the right. Continue on back and forth. Exhale as you finalize that spin in the neck. Inhale as you begin the spin. Exhale as you look the other way. Continue with this movement. I'm finding that I'm not really using the back of my chair. It's got a bit of a roundness into it. But if you're finding that you need to rest into the chair, that's okay. I just will always encourage you to sit tall so that the spine is extended as if it's an antenna up and out, able to receive energy and information. One more time to the right or to the side that you're headed towards. One more time to the other side. Now the palms, um, the thumbs, point up and make a fist here. Inhale, bring the thumbs together above the head. So without looking up above your head, try and bring your thumbs to connect. Really reach, really stretch up as if you're almost pulling your sit bones off the chair. Exhale, come back down, spread the fingers wide, let the hands drop down along the side of the chair. Allow for a release, a relaxation in the shoulders. Make your arms heavy. Make a fist again, Finger, um, thumbs out. Inhale, bring them up. Connect the thumbs above the head. Stretch. You might have better spatial awareness this time. Breathe in. Push those palms together, or sorry, the thumbs together. Exhale, let go. Fan the fingers wide. Lower the arms back down. You may feel a nerve stretch here. You really spread those fingers wide, a nerve stretch from the neck out, the shoulders down the arm. One more time. Four fingers into the pads of the palm, thumbs out, rise up, connect the thumbs above the head. Inhale, hold, press those thumbs. Exhale, fan the fingers, fan the arms back down. Ha. From here, the right hand comes across to the knee the outside of the knee. The chair back makes a great handle for your left hand to reach into center or to the other side or just to the same side near your hip. Look over the left shoulder. Have a check in with your feet again that they're both firmly rooted on the mat or on your carpet. Another deep breath in, expand your heart. 
As you exhale, the right hand stays and the left hand draws across and over top of the right arm. Round into your spine now. You may have to shift a little bit forward to make space for the spine to round. Chin comes in. Inhale, sit up tall. Let the right hand go. Keep the left hand on the outside of the right knee and we'll twist to the other way. Catching hold of the back of the chair wherever you can grip to. A light grip. We want relaxation here. We don't want to be tense. Deep breaths in and out through the nose. Take an inhale. With the exhale, the right hand comes up over the left arm, cross over, rounding in the spine here. Chin into the chest. Palms on the knees, soles of the feet anchored and rooted in the floor. Release both hands, lift them up high to the sky, palms face each other, stretch. Exhale, back hands to the knees again. Hands can push onto the knees and just shift your weight forward so that uh, you have some space between the bum and the knees. We're going to flex and extend the spine. This is similar to what we do as a cat-cow motion. So hands are supported on the knees. Inhale, pull the heart forward. Tilt the head back as far as feels comfortable for you. And the tailbone lifts and draws up towards the back of the head. With your exhale, you round and pull the navel through to the spine, long in the arms, chin to the chest. So you might feel your sits bones rotating or moving along on the chair. So inhale, come forward. Exhale, press back and round. You can move slowly. You can move quickly through this. Just continue this forward and back motion, always doing your best to align the breath. With the movement. The breath can actually go the opposite way too. You can exhale as you open the heart and you can inhale as you round. Sometimes it's experimental. It's more natural to inhale forward, opening the heart, to exhale and round because there's less space when you bring the chin to the chest and the navel to the spine. There's more space as you open up the heart, but you become more vulnerable when we open the front body. All those organs are there and they're exposed. Continuing to be aware that there's an even balance, equilibrium in both feet, that you're seated equally on both sits bones, that both hands are placing even pressure to the knees. And then finish off, one more exhale, one more inhale. Back to center. We'll wiggle and walk our feet over to the right and then wiggle and walk the feet over to the left. So just back and forth. The bum might shift a little bit right to left. So you're working into your ankles back and forth. The knees might move a little bit, the hips might have to shift and help you move, but the most of the work is in the ankles. One more time to the right. One more time back to the left. Do your best to use your entire foot, feet, and back into the center again. Now shift if you're not already on the edge of your seat, so to speak. Bring yourself as close to the edge of your seat as you can. Keeping the left knee bent, extend the right foot out, the heels connected. This knee isn't fully hyperextended. It's got a slight bend in it to protect the knee. Reaching the arms out in front, lean forward, placing weight and support into that right heel. From here, you can take the left hand to the knee and you can 
place the right hand to the shin or to the knee to the shin or maybe down to the toes. The idea is not to round the spine. The idea is to have an extended spine still, so it's out on a parallel. But the chin can be pulled in, tucked in. Inhale, lift and rise back up. And switch legs, placing the right foot down flat, extending the left leg out, reaching the arms forward on the parallel first, then the core. Right hand to the knee, left hand wherever you can get it to. Make sure you feel stable and firm. If you feel like you're falling forward on your chair, you are going too far. You're reaching too hard. And just relax back. Inhale, lift and rise back up here. The feet can go out. If you are sitting uh, on your chair on a mat, the uh, placement for me is that my heels are on my mat and my toes are off my mat. That's just a gauge. Your feet are just a little wider than the, um, what are these called? The feet of the chair. <laughs> okay, so the hands back onto the knees again. It, inhale, draw the torso forward elbows wide and let the heart come forward for now. Make sure you're stable. You might want to shift your bum a little bit back further. Push off, push into the knees, lift the core back up, extend in the elbows. As you exhale this time, the right shoulder dips down and you look left as you tilt forward. Inhale, come back up, lengthen in the arms. And we dip to the other side. Inhale, come back up. We're going to do this a few times. Good for the shoulders. Exhale, dip to the right, shoulder down, look left. Inhale, back up. Dip left, look right. Stay strong in the knees, keep them above the ankles. Come up, exhale, right shoulder down. Inhale up, and left. Back to center, lift up, keep the feet wide. Arms reach above the head again, stretch. Bring the palms together above the head. Interlace the hand, interlace the fingers. Bring the arms out in front on the parallel, round the spine. Now shift the arms forward. So you're bringing the heart and the arms forward. And then you're gonna bring the hips down to the mat or as far forward as you can. Maybe it's time to reach for that block and place the block there. I'm just going to mute, whoever showed up. I think it might be Pat. Arms are either on that block or they're just reaching down and forward between the feet. You don't have to be out really far. You can just be down between the feet. Let your head hang. Wiggle out your shoulders a little bit if you're not meeting that block. If you do have your hands on the block, you can still wiggle your shoulders out. <laughs> Inhale, lift back up. Sorry, I just get distracted. Somebody's unmuted themselves. I'm just please gonna mute you, not to offend anybody. <laughs> and reach the arms high again, palms facing each other. Bring the hands back together, we're going down again. Exhale, round the spine first, arms out on the parallel. Inhale, draw the heart forward. Reach down towards the floor, bringing the hands between the feet or onto that block. Drop the head, drape that core between the knees, and then wiggle, roll out the shoulders if it feels good for you. Inhale, push into the feet and lift the core back up. Arms to the sky again, palms face each other. Stretch, pull that body off the sits bones almost. Hands come together. 
interlace. Exhale, round here, arms out on the parallel. Inhale, draw the heart forward. Reach and lower yourself back down to the mat between the feet or to the block. Push into the feet, rise back up. Stabilizes you, inhale up. Hands come together, interlace. Exhale, round. Inhale forward. Exhale down. Glide the hands along to meet the feet. Push into the feet, rise back up. You got the flow here. Bring the hands up. Exhale to parallel, round spine. Inhale, heart forward. And dive down. A few more times here just to get yourself into the groove. Inhale, rise back up. Hands together. Exhale, round. Pull forward and draw down. Come back up. Last time, really stretch here. Exhale. Inhale forward and glide down and rise up. Arms reach, walk those feet back together or to uh, hips distance. If your blocks, if you have the blocks and if they aren't at either side of you, you can place them there now. Arms can return back up as you're ready. And we're simply dropping down to the right side, maybe grabbing onto the block or the stool and the left arm high. Look up past the hand if you feel comfortable. If you don't have that block there and you don't wanna fall off your chair, don't go so far. You can also grab onto the side of the chair if you don't have a block and shift the body to the one side. Now in order to come back up, bend slight into the elbow, push off of the hand, engage the core, and we switch sides, rainbow over to the other side. Your best to keep both feet connected, toes fanned, opening up through this lateral line in the side body. It's pretty an intense threaded system. Bend into that left elbow, reach spread high, down to the right side. My regulars know I like to do things in threes or on repeat so you really get the, um, the movement therapy get into some of the emotions and you release some of the stress. Each time we stretch, as long as we don't overstretch, it opens us up a little bit more. Bend, release, push off. Exhale. Look up. Keep the sits bones connected. That right hip wants to lift up high. Bend and push off, engage the core, lift up with the breath. Exhale down to the right side, third time each side. Push off, rise up, flex the left side. Last time, exhale. Inhale, come up. Back to center. Okay, from here, I invite you to stand up off of your chair. <laughs> and we're going to place um, the chair. If you need to move it, you can. I'm going to just to be uh, able to be on screen. So have the chair so that when you go to bend your knees and squat down, your hands are just in at, at the chair that they can reach comfortably from a long arm position. If it's too low for you to go all the way down to the seat, you can spin the chair around and have the back side of the chair as your support. So it's, it's up to you. I'll just give everyone a second to figure out what works best for them. Okay, the arms go high. Reach, stabilize the feet, ground down here. Bend into the knees. Reach forward with the arms. Hands connect to the chair wherever works best for you. Then lengthen through the legs and step back a little bit further. This is a variation of a down dog. And then you can drop the head between the hands, between the biceps. Take three 
rejuvenating breaths in this position. The knees don't have to be lengthened. The knees can stay bent. Inhale, lift the head back up and step forward. Push off of the chair, rise back up to stand tall. Stretch through the arms and the core, standing mountain or tadasana. Exhale, bend down into the knees again. Reach the arms forward, connect to your chair and step to where it feels comfortable and stable for you in this down dog variation. Two more breaths. Inhale, lift the head up, step back, push off the chair, bend into the knees and rise up to stand tall, reach, expand, exhale down, bend into the knees, reach that, uh, those arms forward, connect to the chair, use it as support as you step back and hang that head between the biceps. Some breaths. Inhale the head back. Step up. Bend into the knees. Rise, stand tall. Hands back to the heart. Standing back tall again. I'm going to spin my chair around now. So if you haven't been using this backside of the chair, this is a good opportunity to do so. Either walk around your chair, or turn around. This can be done a few different ways, but we'll start here because we're already standing. So reaching forward, as you reach forward, step your left leg forward. And the back right foot, you're on the ball of your back foot. So this is a simple lunge. You may Need to shorten your stance, you may need to lengthen your stance. Arms are long out in front of you. The chair is there to support the balance of this lunge. As you breathe in, you may lengthen the core up. As you breathe out, the core may settle. With the next inhale, please step the right leg back up to connect. Stand tall, relax the shoulders, keep the arms on the back of the chair. Bend down into the knees, look behind you and step the left leg back. The feet are placed as if they're on train tracks or parallel beams, not on one balance beam. Inhale the core up and exhale. You don't have to move up and down. It's just an added little feature, uh, a tracking line or a little bit of extra balance. Next inhale, come back up, step the left leg back to the top of the mat. Swivel around in the hips a few times one way, the other way and back to set. We'll do one more posture from this position and we're stepping back to a warrior one. So the right leg first. The only difference with this is from the crescent lunge is the back right foot steps out on an angle and ideally the whole foot is connected. Angela, I know you have that broken foot so don't step back too far and please put more weight into your front foot if you have any injuries in your ankle. If the chair isn't necessary, you can bring the arms up above the head, but that's why we're doing chair yoga is for that extra support. We've got some ambitious people in the room. With the inhale, please step that right leg back up. You need it with the left. Take a breath, reset. Step the left leg back, warrior one. So it's on a 45, that left foot pointing out on the 45. Same thing, if you'd like to let go of the chair, you can. Otherwise, keep those hands on the chair. The stretch should come down through this inside 
left leg. Inhale, step back up. And please return the chair back to where we were in the beginning. I want to show you a few other little warriors from this position. You can sit back down on the chair. Bring the left leg out to the side. You can shift the weight forward so that the, the hips are closer to the edge of the chair. You're on the edge of your seat. And then wiggle this left leg, right leg, sorry, back where this is a warrior two position for the legs. Left knee over the left ankle. The right leg is long and my foot is parallel to the side of the mat. The hips are side facing and the arms go out. And you look out past that left hand. If you feel like you don't need the chair for support, you can come up off of it, but it is there to stabilize the hips and to ground you down so that you can work on this vertical line that runs through the spine down to the floor. We'll find a peaceful warrior here. So the right hand goes behind the back, elbows bent, left arm high, look up past the left hand and tilt the body back as far as you feel comfortable. Engage your core, arms back to the parallel. And then we take either the left hand or the left elbow to the knee. If you've got a block close by, you can also put the block under your hand and bring the right arm into the air. This is known as a side angle posture. Depth is an important, stability and breath are what are important here. Come on back up to your warrior two position. Return your feet to neutral and center. Roll around in that right knee. So I'm lifting my heel up and I'm circling around. Just as this until we get to the other side. Other way. And then switch, other knee. other way and then you can do that funny little dance you know with the knees and the hands <laughs> just for your brain <laughs> okay I'm back to center reset your bum so that the right knee can come out to the side the left leg can go long and out behind you the hips maintain this side front facing posture the back left foot is parallel to the edge of your mat Arms out, looking ahead to that right foot, right hand. If you're looking at yourself on camera, you can have a check in. If your spine's pulled forward, you want it to be more vertical. That's why I love uh, Zoom yoga because uh, I get to see myself on on camera, and it's good practice. And and I would like to encourage the clients to observe themselves as well. It's great for mindfulness and becoming more connected with who you are. Left hand behind the back, right arm up. Inhale. And take some time here to breathe. Make sure you've got a full breath. If you can't take a full comfortable breath, you might be trying too hard or going too far. Bring the arms back to parallel for warrior two again. A breath and down to the side angle, hand to the knee, arm high, elbow to the knee, or maybe you've got the block there inside of your right ankle to support, to stabilize, to ground you. Look up past the hand. The left hand doesn't have to be high. It can also still, it can stay in the back, at the back. That's just aesthetics or more intensity. Using the left obliques, left abdominals, pull the body back up. Final warrior two. Hands back to the knees. Come on back to center. So we'll do a seated uh, vision of pigeon posture. Bring that right knee up, hands interlace around the shin for now. 
pull the knee in towards the outer right rib cage. Elbows can be wide. Really roll those shoulders back, lift the heart. Circle the ankle. And then moving the other way. And then pause. So this knee is as close to your core as you can bring it. Left hand to the bottom of the right foot. Keep the knee close as you open it away from the body and then place the ankle on top of the left knee. That helps for overextending the um, MCL or the ACL in the knee. So if this is as far as you like, you can stay here. If you'd like to bring the core forward, elbows wide, this is another option. If you'd like to go even further, you can take the hands outside of the legs and drape the body over and towards the earth, the arms long. You are draping down, please pull your chin in. It, it encourages a stretch in the back. Always remembering that if it's hard to breathe, you're going too far. Whatever feels good for you. Please come back up from wherever you're at. Take this leg out long, interlace the hands behind the back of the knee. Give it a stretch either behind the knee or behind the calf. Maybe it's only going this far. Maybe it's up high. It doesn't matter. And lower that right leg back down to the mat. Anchor it firmly, bring the left knee up, hands around the shin, pull it into the outer rib and rotate those ankles. Other way. Good, so keeping your knee nice and close in, support the bottom of the foot with the opposite hand, open the knee up and carefully place it just above your opposite knee get grounded here, get square shoulders, square hips, and either stay or slowly hinge forward from your hips. One more breath for life here. Inhale, lift the core back up. Placing the feet back on the mat. We're going to take the arms out one more time. Let's check in the time. And we're shifting the body. So extending the arms to the right and the body to the right and then extending to the left. Just back and forth. I don't have a lot of space. I'm trying to keep my arms long, but if you're like me and you haven't got much room, you can bend into the arms. If you have more space, do your best to keep those arms long and back and forth. If you've got a partner in the room, give them some love. Hold hands. <laughs> And come on back, sit tall, roll those wrists into center, into your heart space, connect elbows wide, close down the eyes, take a breath, let it go, unroll, wind out those wrists, flip those palms up, push the wall or the air away, Take a breath in, exhale it out and roll the wrists back to center. Connect in the heart center in the front. Another breath in, exhale it out. So the most exciting part here about class now is that we get to use the chair for Shavasana 
and it's actually a very restorative position. I think we should use it all the time in every yoga class. So carefully reaching forward, climbing your way off your chair. However, you can get yourself down to the floor. If you really don't want to lay down onto the floor, you can stay seated and just rest into your chair. But if you can make your way down onto, your, onto the floor, how am I gonna do this? Find a comfortable position on your mat or on your carpet and wiggle your bum pretty close to the base of the chair. And the elbows can bend and support and lower down onto the forearms and then down onto the back. The feet are up on the chair. Hopefully they are at a 90 degree angle. And here you should be very comfortable on your back. One hand on the heart, one hand on the belly or the arms out to the side, palms up. I've got my chair sideways so that my ankles can hang off the side of the chair. It looks to me like some people have their feet against the back of the chair, which is okay, but you may not be as comfortable as if your ankles can hang off the other side. Take whatever time you need to get yourself rested and at ease. The chair is not comfortable for your feet to be up against. You might be close to your bed or a couch, which is just as reliable. Do your best to be still in Shavasana to at peace, to feel safe in this room. Notice what's going on in your mind now, in your breath now, in your body, in the spaces. Hopefully I've given you some tools to use with this starter class to when you're sitting at your computer, when you're doing work, when you're sitting in a Zoom meeting that you don't want to be a part of. You can do these simple stretches, simple exercises, just to stay moving and mobile in your seat to encourage a taller spine, to encourage your sits bones and your hips to sit differently on a chair, to not be slouched, but to have that integrity to maintain composure and focus while you're being forced to sit, which isn't on a chair, which isn't really the most natural way of sitting for human beings. It's funny though, that we can use a chair for yoga and make it really creative. Take 
Please bring your hands together and rub your palms vigorously to reawaken. If you're able to rub your soles of your feet together as well, please do. You can bring your knees into your chest from this position, or if you have to shimmy back away from your chair, go ahead. As you're ready, roll to a preferred side, right or left on the floor ideally closest to the chair so that the chair can be an aid to come back up to seated either beside your chair or standing and then sitting back down onto your chair. It's your choice. Take your time. We're in a pandemic, there's no rush. <laughs> He's back up, from what I can tell. I conclude classes with three ohms. So hands at your heart center. Oh, you are welcome to unmute yourself if you'd like to join in. Take a breath in. And a breath out. in, out, and you can ohm at your pace. Please join in when you're ready and with three. Um, Thank you. I wish you success and happiness today. Namaste. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks.